The question is, what is the, the character or the quality of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that you know about, that you would like to adopt in your life? Or you already have it in application? So just ponder on this, inshallah. Because each one of us has to have a quality that matches, or we cannot say matches, because the Prophet is way up there and we try very, very hard to emulate him in our life. So we would love to emulate the Prophet ﷺ, and that's why the love comes. Why do we love our Prophet Muhammad Why is it there is a special relationship between us Muslims and Prophet Muhammad? That Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you can't find in any other denomination or other religion. Like, you, you, you know, many times that those people who try to discredit the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for, for many, many years, ever since he started the, uh, the message of, of Islam, they always attacked his character. And it will be a continuous attack because it, they are relentless. And sometimes the people react angrily or not in a very smart way to the attacks on the Prophet ﷺ. We cannot say this is wrong because from the Prophet's love in our hearts that we are ready to sacrifice our life for him. That's how we were raised, and that's how what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us in, in the Qur'an to love our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That there are too many, too many ayahs that says about the Prophet. And in Surah Al-Hashr, Surah number 59, if you're taking uh, notes, uh, ayah number 7, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ That accept willingly whatever the apostle gives you thereof and refrain from demanding anything that he withholds from you. Be aware of Allah. Heed Allah for verily Allah is severe in punishment. When we come to the character of the Prophet وسلم, in the Quran and in our mind because we were raised from early childhood from our teachers and our fathers, our mothers and our shaykh from the mosque to love the Prophet and this is a given in our life and uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh, yeah, no, I was just doing that thing already. Oh, no video, please. I'm not looking good. Allah. <laughs> now I can't talk. <laughs> I don't like videotaping. So you always like me? Yeah, it's, it's, I, I'd like to be spontaneous. Good looking? No, astaghfirullah. I, I, I don't mean that way. I don't mean it that way. Because we really need to to, to, to be spontaneous when when we talk about our Prophet Inshallah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the moon in the Quran, He said, Qamara Munira. In uh, uh, Surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Tabarak alladhi ja'ala fi samai burujan wa ja'ala sirajan wa qamara munira. That all blessings is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that made the constellation in the heavens and then put in it a radiant lamp and light giving moon. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the sun, He said, A'udhu billahi rajim, wa ja'alna sirajan wahaja in Surah Amma. What number is that? Now. Yes. What number is that? Surah uh, is the first surah of Juz 30th. Juz Amma is Juz 30 is the first surah. Surah Al-Naba. Surah Al-Naba. Well, thank you. Yeah. Huh? 
78. 78. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't have the number. Yeah, I so when, when he described the sun, he said, وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَحَّاجًا That we have placed the sun as a lamp full of blazing splendor. But here comes the, the part where I really want to concentrate on. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? He combined both descriptions to, to give us a complete picture of who Sayyidina Muhammad is. Allahumma salli alayhi. وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيَرًا So, Allah gave him the beauty and the majesty in the character of the Prophet So to us, who is our Prophet? He is or by the permission of Allah is a caller to Allah وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ Meaning that without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be no prophet. Right? So Sayyidina Muhammad is the caller to Allah. وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا So he combined the description of the sun and the moon. The light, the enlightenment of everybody. To bring people from the darkness into the light. This is what Muhammad is all about. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So when we say Muhammad, it's nice to, to pray and say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Whether with your tongue or with your heart, it is acceptable. <laughs> One time, the Prophet وسلم, he called Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud is one of the early Sahabis and he's a reciter of the Quran. And he said, Ibn Mas'ud recite for me the Quran. And he said, Oh Rasulullah, should I recite it to you and it was revealed upon you? And he said, I would like to hear it from someone else. <laughs> so he started with Surah An Nisa, Surah chapter number 4, until he reached Ayah number 41. <laughs> فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا That how then will the sinners face the judgment day when we shall bring forward witnesses from within every community and bring you, O Prophet of Allah, as a witness against them. And the Prophet said, stop here. Ibn Mas'ud and Ibn Mas'ud looked at the Prophet وسلم, and his eyes were full of tears he was crying for these people who could not get the message from him that's the love of the Prophet to his Ummah so when we celebrate the birth of a Prophet Muhammad وسلم, some people say it is innovation, it is a bid'ah. We don't want to do that because the Prophet did not celebrate it and the Sahabis did not celebrate it after him and it is a bid'ah so we should not do it. Maybe I agree with it because the birth, the actual birth when they say Rabi al Awwal, the 12th of Rabi al Awwal, is not really known per se. Maybe 8th, maybe the 9th, maybe the 14th or the 12th. It's not really known. But what we know for sure, and it's recorded, that his death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed away on the 12th of Rabi' al Awwal, which was on a Monday. Okay? So, if we associate 12th of Rabi' al Awwal <coughs> with the celebration, that means we are celebrating the death of the Prophet, which we never do. But, for us, the celebration of the Mawlid is a celebrating the message, celebrating the person. Subhan Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We are celebrating the message that he brought to us. So when we love someone, when you love someone, you follow. Right? 
We, we follow with all, wholeheartedly. And that's why we need to understand that the celebration by itself is not because of uh, uh, the 12th of Bi'al Awad and we have to make a nasheed and make a, a, a dinner and just celebrate. This is not the idea of the celebration. The idea of celebration is to see what can we emulate and put in our life and adopt from the Prophet ﷺ personality to make us better people, to make us better person. For example, like when 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 I listen about the, of the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, which is full of many many instances that he was merciful, he was a, a encouragement to the leadership of the young or the youth. When he sent Mus'ad ibn Umayr a Sahabi or the companion, he was 17 years old. He sent him as an ambassador to Medina before he migrated to Medina to let the people of Medina know what Islam is all about. So he depended on the youth and that character by itself to encourage the youth to be leaders, we should adopt in our community, especially in the mosques or organizations, that we do not take it as granted when we are on the board that we are going to be until death do us part. Because there are too many young generations eager to lead and we have to give them the forum and the tools, all right, to make them leaders for in the future. Otherwise, our mission will be gone, undone with the, with the death of the person. So we are not the, a message of a person a message of community, message for everybody. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ did. Merciful, he was merciful with, with, with the animals. He said the hadith, وَفِي كُلِّ كَبِدٍ رَطِبَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ About the charity, that when, when you find an animal, hurt animal, uh, uh, you rescue it, because you have a sadaqah for that. It doesn't mean that, oh, I'm collecting sadaqahs. It's, it's the meaning beyond that is to be nice to the animals. You know, like what we do in our community in, in America and the West with the dogs and those lost dogs and who wants to adopt an animal, a pet. This is the message of Islam since 1439 years ago. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu stood for. And he said in a hadith, Sahih, that a woman went into hellfire because she kept a cat locked without feeding it and letting don't, don't, didn't let it go outside of the room of the room to eat and the and the opposite uh, 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 issue is that a, a Bedouin who was in the desert went down to the well water well and he drank when he got up he found a dog thirsty dog he got back in and he didn't have any container to get water, so he took with his shoe and got up and gave it to the dog to, to drink. And the Prophet said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave the Bedouin because of this deed. You know, it's a small thing we do in our life to be nice to the animal kingdom, to be nice to the plants, to the... Even in a, in a hadith, he said, if someone has a plant and, and trying to plant it in, on, in earth and judgment day is about to come, finish planting it. Meaning that do not hesitate to be nice to, the, to nature. This is what the Prophet is all about. It's not like I saw a video the other day or a community is celebrating the Prophet's birth and they are saying, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And they have a cake, and the Sheikh is cutting the cake. Happy birthday, Muhammad. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a nice gesture. That's what they know, and that's how they celebrate, which is good. But the meaning of it is not like we eating cake and drinking coffee or tea, and that's it. Celebration is to celebrate the message of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why we really need to, to have this in, in, in our, um, our mind. Uh, I would uh, recite, I would recite, Surah An-Nisa, 
Surah number 4, Ayah 69. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ رَضُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصَّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Like for those who pay heed unto God and the Apostle shall be among those upon whom God has bestowed the blessings which are the prophets and those who never deviated from the truth and those who uh, uh, with their lives paid uh, uh, before witnesses to the truth and the righteous ones and goodly company are these meaning yuta' means to obey or to follow suit so what is the best thing to do except to be in Jannah with this group of people right yeah. so the, the road to Jannah is to obey Allah and his apostle it's simple it sounds simple but it's hard sometimes you know it's hard for us to emulate completely and fully otherwise we'll be like the prophet but we try harder every time what's what's the most uh, uh, common name for the prophet do you do you know do you know a common name to the prophet like they say uh, Muhammad al Amin al Amin right the trustworthy okay okay so that character by itself we can emulate in our lives you don't need a paperwork or to sign a paper that I owe you yeah. money, for example. If I lend you money, you don't have that paper. It's just you have it in your heart that you are a trustworthy like Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and I will return my debt. And that's what he did when he migrated to Medina. He left Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an in his place to give back those trusted uh, 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 things that they trusted, Quraysh trusted in, with him to return them back. Even though they wanted to kill him, and another person would say, you know, I'm taking everything with me. You know, because these people don't deserve, in our interpretation of who deserves to get the money or doesn't deserve, he didn't, because he's the trustworthy. Al-Amin. Al-Rahim meaning he's merciful, he's all mercy with, with his people, with his uh, 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 Quraysh, like an instance, you know, we all know Dua al-Ta'if, when they stoned him, alayhi salatu wasalam, they threw stones at him, at him, and they kicked him out of Ta'if when he was calling for, for them to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one God, and he said, Oh Allah, forgive my people because they know not. They don't know the beauty of this message. They're ignorant. And he told Jibreel, do not destroy them because someday, one day, people from their generation or uh, from their offsprings, they will come and believe in the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another instance when, when they, uh, in Medina, it was a janaza, uh, a, a, a Jewish person died, and the Prophet sallallahu stood and he was sad and they asked him but he's a Jew he's not a Muslim why are you sad he said this is one soul that escaped from me that I could not reach to invite to believe in the message that's how merciful he was even with you know we all know the, the story about his neighbor the Jewish neighbor whether it was a true story or not I'm not going to go into the in debate with that. But the story of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his seerah, is full of many examples for us to take in, to celebrate the message. So that's why I asked you the question in the beginning that what kind of a character from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would you like to emulate in your life, in our life? قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وأبناؤكم وإخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين سورة التوبة number 9 آية 24 say 
if your fathers and your sons, your brothers and your spouses and your clan, and worldly goods which you have acquired in this life, and the commerce whereof you fear a decline, and the dwellings in which you take pleasure in, are dearer to you than God and his apostle, and the struggle in his cause, then wait until God makes manifest his will. So, meaning that loving the prophet is part of our religion. You see, that's the difference between the Muslim loving their prophet and other religion goers or believer, you know, making fun of Jesus alayhi salam or Moses because it's the first amendment that they can say anything there. They are free to say anything. These characters in our life, those prophets are worthy of not touching in, in, in a way that ridicule. And that's why Muslims all over the world love the prophet in a way that even any bad name that would instigate a fight. I would read one hadith it says like Allah forgave this past and future all the sins. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, yes. Uh, that's there are many hadiths. Yeah. There is a hadith on Abi Huraira radiallahu an. He said, teach your children. The Prophet وسلم, said, teach your children three characters. The love of your Prophet. Hubbi nabiyyikum. Wa hubbi ali bayti. And the love of his family. And wa qira'ati al-Quran. Recitation of the Quran. Those three things teach your children. So we need to teach, teach our children, talk to them about who is Prophet Muhammad. Why do we love him? Why we should love him? And then why we should love his family? Sayyidina Fatima, alayhi salam. Sayyidina Ali, Sayyidina Al Hassan, Al Hussein, all his family. Sayyidina Al Abbas, Sayyidina Hamza. All of them we have to love them because they are part of our religion part of our Iman, to love the Prophet and his family. This is what we really need to do. <coughs> Another ayah, ayah in Surah Ali Imran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Surah number 30, ayah number 31, Surah 33. So say, if you love God, Follow me, the Prophet Muhammad is saying. God will love you and forgive your sins. And for God is much forgiving dispenser of grace. And that's what you're talking about. The, the, the love of Prophet. What number, what number Surah number 3, Al Imran, yeah. ayah number 31. 31, thank you. Now, another ayah. I don't, you, you, there are too many examples in the Quran. The one that I like the most, I love the most to recite also in Surah Tawbah, number 9, so ayah number 128. Surah number 9, ayah number 128. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ that means, indeed, there has come unto you, O mankind, a prophet, apostle from among yourselves. Heavily weighs upon him the thought that you might suffer in the life to come. Full of concern for you, he is and full of compassion and mercy towards the believers. This is what we really need to emulate, to be full of mercy and compassion towards those who believe in God, number one, and for the humanity at large. That's part of our aqidah. That's part of our deen. That's how we celebrate the Prophet ﷺ birth, is to adopt his stories, his tradition, and to abide by the Qur'an Allah has revealed. To be like that, and this is a, a, an instant that happened, I would like to share this with you. 
it is a, the final moments of the Prophet ﷺ on this earth. When he stood to give the, the, the farewell uh, uh, khutbah, speech, and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Please say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Because every time you say it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you ten hasanats and remove ten sins. This is a hadith. But sometimes I say, okay, ten or twelve or fifteen, it doesn't matter the number. It's just matter, what matters is that you remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always to say Assalamu alaikum ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah. Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallim. He says, it seems that you are, you are concerned about me, the Prophet said, because you are sick. And all the believers at the time, the companions were very, very emotional. And they said, oh yes, O Prophet of Allah, God forbid any harm befalls you. And he said, oh people, you will meet me in the day of judgment, not here in this dunya. It will be at the fountain. It will be in Jannah, al hawd By God, it's like I am looking at it from my place here. O oh people, by God, it is not poverty that I am afraid for you, but I fear the love of this world for you, that you compete with it, in it, as those who fought before you and competed and it will destroy you as it destroyed them. Then he said, O oh people, by God, is be mindful of the prayer. As-salata wa ma malakat aymanukum. And he kept repeating it. Be mindful of your prayer. Be mindful of your prayer. Be mindful of women under your protection. I ask you, in the meaning of it, I ask you by God Almighty to keep your prayer. And he kept repeating it. And then he said, oh people, heed God in women. Heed God with women. This is another character that all of his life, the story is that he always was nice to his wives always was the man to help in chores, in household. Always did not order people to do things for him. He always did things for himself. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he said, O oh people, a servant of God is giving the choice to choose between this world or at what Allah has for him. And he chose which is with God. At that time, no one understood what he meant except Abu Bakr. He started weeping, crying. And he said, O oh Prophet of Allah, I would pay anything for your safety. We sacrifice our parents, our possessions for you. So he interrupted him, and the companions were so hard on Abu Bakr. How could he interrupt the Prophet from talking? And he said, yeah, he said, oh people, don't worry about Abu Bakr. Let him, let him be, let him be. No one of you has any virtue upon us except we rewarded him. He said that about the companions. Only Abu Bakr could not be rewarded except by God. And then he, he said, all doors to the mosque to be closed except the door of Abu Bakr. Keep it open because Allah will reward him. And he said, may God reward you. May God preserve you. May God bless you. May God support you. And these are the last words to be addressed to the Ummah. Yes. He said, oh people, 
relay from me the salutation and the blessings to everyone who follows me to the day of judgment. Oh Allah bless you. Oh Allah bless our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are the last words. So we 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 have to a tendency to forget of who we are. Among other things that in this life, you know, work, mortgage, job, we tend to forget and become like our hearts become little dry. Our tongue becomes dry a little bit. We do not have that passion. I'm not saying in general. I'm saying sometimes myself, I find myself uh, uh, encompassed with all this dunya and the work. You have to have a, a, a wet tongue with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once we start this habit, then everything goes to the heart. And then we become living at ease. See, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has went, went through hardship after hardship all his life. But he never lost the, the, the vision of relaying the message of mercy. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him that you are a, of a great character person. Many, many things happen and we have to rely on our expertise and our uh, uh, stories that we listen to and to emulate and put in our uh, uh, application in our life. We celebrate the message, we celebrate the legacy of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, lessons to be derived from al Mawlid al Nabawi. To embody patience. He was patient. One story in Medina, there was a, a, a person named Hatam al Ta'i, if you remember that person name in the Arabic literature. Hatam was one of the leaders of his tribe. And he heard about the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, well, let me see who that person is. I want to follow. He came and he found him in the masjid, like a very, you know, clean masjid, but it's not like a palace. And he talked with him, and the Prophet invited him to his home. Because he knew that was one of the leaders in Medina. He followed him, and then the Prophet on the way encountered with an old lady. And she said, oh Prophet, oh Muhammad, I need you. I need to talk to you. And he said, okay. He didn't tell her, oh, you know what? Come later to the masjid, I'll be there, because I have somebody who is important with me. I'm going to invite him to Islam. He stood up. And he stood and listened, and listened, minute after minute, after an hour, and he's just listening. So Hatam was saying in his mind, that should be a prophet. No, no regular person will endure this with that old lady. So he was patient. Mm. He was merciful toward old ladies or old people. And another story, you know, I like to say the stories. I, I wasn't ready for it, but it's just coming to me now. And most of them, probably you know it, but I would share it with you. That Arabi or the Bedouin who came to the masjid and he relieved himself. Mm. You remember that, the story? Yeah. Oh, okay. So he, he went to the corner in the masjid because the masjid didn't have carpets like here or a, a, a located area of prayer. You know, I was on, on uh, dirt, on some, uh, uh, you know, uh, walls and doors. and So, a Bedouin doesn't know anything about uh, masjid or nothing about buildings. So he took a corner and he started easing himself. So all the Sahabis were so mad at him, and they tried to reprimand him, catch him, beat him up. How, how dare you? do that in the masjid of the Prophet. 
the Prophet said, don't do that because let him be, because otherwise he will be sick if, if he withheld his, you know, let him be. After he's done, he said, call him. He came to him, he said, my brother, this is a message that we pray. We do not do this. So next time, don't do it. And he ordered the Sahabas to put dirt on top, just to make it to dry. So that Bedouin saw with Prophet Muhammad mercy and passion and patience what he didn't see in his companions. Again, the companions are the followers of the Prophet But even though we as people, sometimes we say we, we follow, but we do not apply instantly in our life. Even the, the companions were, you know, uh, so, uh, so uh, fast to, to draw, so to speak. And then he said, Oh Allah, I ask you to forgive Muhammad and me only. And don't forgive these people. <laughs> so the Prophet smiled and he said, Okay, you're, you're making it really narrow for something that is so huge and big and rampant. So do not say that. May Allah bless Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. There are too many stories. I, I, I don't have the time to share with you more, but I would like to go back to my first question. So I need to, I'm not going to put you on the spot, although I would love to do that as I, say, I, as I do in Ramadan, but I would like to I would like to ask you, were you here in the beginning of the lecture? I asked a question, if you would uh, adopt a character from the seerah of Prophet Muhammad, or what you know about Prophet Muhammad, what would it be? My biggest weakness is sabr. Sabr? Patience. So you would adopt this for the year. So I'll see you inshallah next year. Of course I'm going to see you before that. But uh, you, you report to me how many instances you lost your patience. How many, how many of you have that weakness of being patient? MashaAllah. So we, we, will, we will adopt this after you, inshallah. I put my, your name here. Jamila, what's, what's... Same. Same thing? Okay, anything else like uh, sister in the back? The uh, black uh, scarf. Yes, that's you. Patience. Okay, I need something new. Okay. How about forgiveness? Yeah, I, I, okay, how about you? Yes. Forgiveness? Not yet. Okay. Yes. Okay. I like to adapt all of his personality. What is it? Personality character, but it's not possible as a human being, I find myself. But the first thing I would like to adapt myself is smile. To replace that I careful, I cheerful smile face. Mind? Smile. 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 <laughs> smile. <laughs> when you smile. Smile. When you smile. in the face of your brother or sister is a charity. So smiling, this is good. So okay, now we have to be a smiling people and patient people. <laughs> All right. Yes, sister. Oh, uh, yeah, sister. I was saying forgiveness. Oh my goodness. This is a, a thing of importance, great importance. To be forgiving person. It's not easy, Wallahi. Believe me, we think it is easy to forgive, but sometimes when we are hurt, it's hard for us to forgive. We are human beings. So let us try to forgive those who give us hard time, let's say. Okay, forgiveness. Sister, I go back to you. Anything? You said the same thing, patience, right? Is she patient with you? She is? Sometimes too patient. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, but what are you going to adopt from the character of the Prophet Um I think maybe his intensity in faith, which is... Intensity in faith. More intense than my own. <laughs> May Allah bless you. I mean, I think, I think of him, you know, even before he was a prophet, going miles outside town, climbing up to a mountain, going yes. and spending time in a cave. Yes. Because he had that kind of faith and wanted to draw a relationship with God in that faith. So Amazing. I do that. Amazing. And being nice to your wife. <laughs> right? When I said patience, I'm patience with myself. I'm empathetic 
with others, and I'm patient with others, so I'm really, really hard on myself. You're hard on yourself, and that's why the quality of a good person, to be honest with you, that you always put yourself in check. Yes? Yeah, my one is got a bit like a, it's a little big, so I start with a, like a, his kindness. Kindness. Yeah, the kindness, like a, how you like a, you are all about kindness, like a, how he present the be people, kind. be kind, be kind, a merciful son. Be kind, be yes. Not angry, patient. The Prophet said, Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi, wa ana khayrukum li ahli. The best amongst you are those who are good for their wives, daughters, sisters, and I am the best amongst you. So put that in mind, please. Yes, brother. Generosity. Generosity, be generous. Yes, the, the time that the Prophet Muhammad, I think that he Allah owed, Allah said, Muhammad. He owed something from the Jew. Jew came before the due date, he says, Ya Rasulullah, you owe this, how is it possible that you are the Prophet of Islam, and that you don't pay your due, blah, blah. And Umar, radallahu anh, he just said, it's turned up, how dare you talk to the Prophet Muhammad like this? Umar, okay, he's right. Can you go to your home, give his dates, and give 10% extra? Uh -huh. And the uh, Jew knows that Prophet is generous. Yes. He gave before all this due date, it extra. Yeah. Is he just, he confirmed that he's the Prophet of Rasul. Yeah, so, I heard that story before, yes. Okay, brother. Integrity and trustworthiness. Trustworthiness and? Integrity. Integrity. May Allah make us among those who are in really integral and trustworthy. Okay. Now, put you on the spot, no? Okay. How about you? No? Knowledge. 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 Yeah, he was knowledge. Always sought knowledge. He said in a hadith, Knowledge is the target of every believer. Wherever you find it, you are the best person to obtain it. This is what it is. Okay, sister in the back. Yes, yes, you. Iman. Iman, faith. That goes with this. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, I want to say truthfulness. Truthfulness. Yeah, because when you're truthful, it's, it you know, goes hand in hand with being real. And when you're real, people can you, who you really yes. are. So. Truthfulness is the road to be real in your life. The last one from the group. Okay. Yes. Uh, develop the habit of continue, continuously dhikr of Allah. Focus Continuous dhikr of Allah. And uh, ultimate, uh, yes. focus on the ultimate goal. Yeah, no. To continuously make dhikr and to remember Allah in your heart. And remember, nobody said anything about tahajjud, the night prayer. He used, he used to pray standing until his feet were swollen. That's when the Prophet ﷺ be at night, standing in worship and prayer. And I made it myself just to make sure to wake up earlier than Fajr about half hour early, just to make few rak'ahs in the darkness of the night to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the Prophet used to do, <coughs> making dua. So if we make a pledge, inshallah, it's for all our benefit as people, as individuals, with our faith, to strengthen our faith, is to wake up before Fajr and make few rak'ahs. May Allah bless you. May Allah make us follow the steps of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.